In this video, we're going to talk about what are certs. We're going to talk all about them. We're going to start with what is it to start with? Then how do we simplify them? How do we add and subtract them? How do we multiply, divide them? And then finally, what is rationalizing the denominator as it relates to certs? So let's start with what is certs? Let's get into it. So what is a CERD? Well, first I want to tell you where the CERD belongs in the realm of numbers. We know our natural numbers, they're the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, and so forth. And if you go a little bit further than that, they are part of the whole number set. So the whole number set are all the counting numbers and including zero. We go further than there and we have integers, which includes negative numbers as well. And we also have rational numbers such as these. Now rational numbers, if you remember from your year eight studies, they are numbers that can be made up of a ratio of two numbers. So one integer divided by another integer, for example, four over three is a rational number. Then we come to our irrational numbers. So these are the ones that can't be written as ratios or as a fraction. So we've got pi, you know, you're familiar with that one. Numbers such as this, where it has an infinite number of decimals, that one can't be written as a fraction with integers. And then we've gone across these ones, which are square roots, cube roots, those types of things. And they end up with non-terminating decimals as well. So they're called irrational numbers. And then if we include all these together, these are what we call our real number set. So all of these types of numbers are part of our real numbers. And the one we are actually looking at, thirds, is this one here. So it's part of the irrational number set. And so you need to know kind of where it belongs in the family of numbers. So it's here. These are the ones we're looking at. So here we have two numbers. This one is a third. This one is not a third. Why is that? They look exactly the same. So the definition of a third really is that it's got this funny little symbol here. And this is called a radical or a root sign. It could be a square root, as in this case. It could be a cube root with a little three here, four, five, or nth root. But in this course, we're just dealing with square roots. So they look like this. So why is this one a third and this one not a third? Well, the square root of five, if you actually put that in your calculator, that's going to give you an irrational number, a non-terminating decimal. Whereas if you put the square root of four into your calculator, it's going to give you two. And two is a rational number, two divided by one. So that's the difference. Thirds are only thirds if they are irrational. So this one's not a third, this one is a third. Simplifying thirds. In this section, I've got three examples. Three normal simplifying examples and then two in reverse. All right, enough of that. Let's start simplifying thirds. So the first rule and the main rule of simplifying thirds is this. If you have the square root of a number, then you can break this number up into the, these two numbers. So a times b underneath the radical here. And that's the same as this. Square root of the first number times square root of the second number. So that's kind of our first rule. So let's go through a couple of examples and see what that really means. Square root of eight. We can change eight into four times two. So let's do that four times two. Now, when we actually try and simplify these thirds, what we're looking for is to try and find a square number here. Now, four is a square number. What else is a square number? 16 is a square number. 25 is a square number. Nine is a square number. Now, the reason for that is once we do our little change here, which is what I'm gonna do, using our first rule that we just spoke about. So this square root of four times two is the same as square root of four times square root of two. Now, if we pull out a square number, like this one, four, then when we square root this one, it gives us a nice integer here, so two. So now this is two times square root of two, and we call that just two root two. And this is a third, because it's got this square root of two, which can't be broken down, and there's two of them, so two root two. So square root of eight in simplified form is two root two. Let's try another one, four root 45. So the way I would break this up is I would say four times, and I break the 45 underneath into a nine times five. Nine is a square number, remember? So what happens when we break these up? This will be just a four. This one will be square root of nine. This one will be square root of five. Square root of nine is actually just three. So now we have four times three times root five. We can multiply those two together, get 12 root five, simple stuff. Now I'm gonna skip some steps here. Rather than saying 75 equals 25 times three, I'm just gonna go straight to square root 25, square root of three. And we know this is a square number, so that's five root three. Now you might get it the other way. If you get a question like this, express as a square root of a positive integer. So this is the simplified version, and we're trying to put the two back underneath the radical here. So how would we do that? Two is the same as the square root of four. Basically square this, okay, and then put it under the square root sign. So two is the same as the square root of four, and so now we can use the opposite of our little rule that we had before, and we can join these two together. So if you've got the square root of four times the square root of five, it can be the square root 
all over the top of four times five. So root 20. Two root five is the same as square root of 20. One more quick example. How do we get this back underneath the square root sign? We would square the seven, which makes it 49. So square root of 49 times root two, multiply those together, gives us square root of 98. So this is the non-simplified version. This is the simplified version. That's it, that's, so that's how you simplify thirds. Let's talk about adding and subtracting thirds. I've got four examples, each getting more complex as we go. I have two root three plus four root three here. Now, if I wanna add these two together, what I do in my head is I imagine that this square root of three and square root of three is actually x. So, 2x plus 4x. Now you know how to do this. 2x plus 4x is clearly 6x. So, is 6x. But remember, our x was actually square root of 3. So I can change that back to square root of 3. So 6 root 3. Now after you do these a little bit, you don't have to change them to x's anymore. You'll just recognize that this square root of 3, you just leave it as it is, and you'll have 2 plus 4. So, 2 root 3's plus 4 root 3's equals 6 root 3's. This is very similar to the previous one. So what happens here? It looks a little bit complicated, but it's not really. And we're gonna move them around a little bit so that they're next to each other, okay? Square root of six and square root of six, square root of two and square root of two, just move them next to each other. And now if we imagine that these are x's, it would be four x take three x, obviously that's one x, or in this case, one root six. And this one over here would be three root twos plus two root twos gives us five root twos. So the answer to this one is root six plus five root two. Five root two take square root of eight. Now this doesn't look like you can actually add them or subtract them to each other, but you can because this square root of eight can be made up of a number of these root twos here. So let's do that. Five root two take, remember eight is four times two, which is the same as square root of four times square root of two, which is the same as if this turns into a two, becomes two root two. So now we have five root two take two root two, we got five, take two, that gives us three root two. What do we do here? This looks very complicated. Square root of five, square root of 20, square root of 45. I'm pretty sure we can break this 20 down to have a square root of five, and I'm pretty sure we can break this 45 down to have a square root of five as well. So let's do that. So the 20 I'm gonna break into square root of four, square root of five, because four times five is 20. And this 45 I'm gonna break up into square root of nine and square root of five. Notice that these are square numbers, so that's we would select those specifically if we are able to. All right, so this square root of four becomes a two, this square root of nine becomes a three. Now we can multiply the three and the two, we can multiply the six and the three. Negative six root five here and 18 root five. And now all of these have a variable of root five. So we can say two root five, take six root five plus 18 root five, or if you want, two x take six x plus 18 x gives us 14 x, and remember x is actually root five. So 14 root five. Multiplying and dividing thirds. In this section, I've got two examples of division, and then one where we expand brackets using multiplication, and then finally the surge shortcut. Let's talk about multiplying thirds now. Here's another little rule, it looks a little bit complicated at the moment, uh, but what it means is we've got a coefficient times a third times another coefficient times a different third, that actually equals this. We can multiply those coefficients together and we can multiply these two thirds together to give us a single number underneath this radical here. And a similar one is this. If we've got a third divided by another third, we can just split it up and you'll have the coefficients one over the other and a big square root sign and this number divided by that number on the inside. So these are very similarly related and these two rules we can use for our next couple of examples. 12 root 18 over three root three. Let's break this up a little bit to look like that using our second rule. If we've got a square root divided by another square root, we can just put a big square root sign over the top of it like this. Big square root over 18 over three. And then this becomes a normal fraction out the front, our two coefficients. So that makes life easy because 12 divided by three is four, 18 divided by three is six. So we've got four and six under the square root sign. So we've got four root six. Negative square root of 10 divided by root two. Looks pretty complicated. Okay, well, let's break this down. I'm gonna rewrite it like this. It helps me seeing it like in this kind of form so I can use my little rule. So for this one here, I've got a coefficient of negative one and one. 
and I can write it, put a big square root over the top of the 10 and the two. So that's what I'm gonna do. Negative one out the front, and this is going to be square root of 10 on two, and that's obviously five. So negative times root five, negative root five. We can use our rules to expand our brackets. So three times two is six. I've got root six times root 10, which is gonna write down on the first line as it is. And I've got three times negative four, gives us negative 12, root six times root six. Now, when we're trying to simplify this here, first one's okay, square root 60, six times 10 is 60. And I've got here 12 times six. Now, why is that? So here's another little rule, a little shortcut. When you multiply two thirds together, when they're exactly the same, root six times root six in this case, it just ends up being the number underneath, just six. Why is that? Because six times six is six squared. When I put them together, and when I find the square root of that, it comes back to six again. So rather than doing that calculation every time, your little shortcut is just saying, if I've got a third times another third, it just becomes what's underneath. So I've done, made a little shortcut here, and said square root of six times square root of six is just six. Hopefully you can remember that for next time. All right, let's keep going. 60 breaks down to square root of four, square root of 15. Now we could have broken 60 down into a number of different things. For example, we could have used 20 and three, but 20 and three don't break down nicely with a square number. I picked a square number, which is four, because I know when I break it apart, this square root will give us a nice integer here. So instead of picking 20 times three, I picked four times 15. So it ends up like this. What happens when I find the square root of four? That becomes a two, right? Okay, so let's make that a two. And I end up getting 12 square root of 15 take 72. Finally, what is rationalizing the denominator? You'll find out right now. Let's talk about rationalizing the denominator. What does that mean? Now this is mathematically correct, but usually if we want the simplified form, we don't like having a third on the denominator. What we do is called rationalizing the denominator. We wanna turn the denominator into an integer. How do we do that? Well, we use the little rule that we spoke about before. So we multiply our fraction by square root of two over square root of two. So whatever this one is, I'm gonna multiply it by this one, again, divided by the same one. This is equivalent of one. We're just changing the form of this. We're not changing the value of this. But what happens when we multiply the numerators and the denominators here? I get one times square root of two, so the top is root two, and the bottom is the square root of two times square root of two. And we spoke about before that when we multiply the same third by itself, it ends up being just what's underneath the square root sign. So square root of two times square root of two is actually just two. So what we get is square root of two over two. So one on root two is the same as root two on two, but this one has a rational denominator. We don't have a third on the denominator here. And this is what is mostly preferred in textbooks. And when you do your calculations, we don't generally like having thirds on the bottom of our answers. Wow, that was a pretty long video. Thirds, pretty crazy stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one. What, the square root of some numbers gives us an infinite non-recurring decimal? That's absurd.